أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And so this should illustrate to you the magnitude or this should illustrate to you that um, the claim when we say Alhamdulillah, it's not something that should be limited to the tongue. And we are saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alami, that he is not only the Lord, the master of that which is restricted to one dimension of existence, but multiple dimensions of existence. And when you look at the word Rabb, you know, there are many derivatives that can be taken from that. One is Lord, one is master, one is uh, the nurturer to maturity, for example, right? The cherisher, the sustainer. And of what? Of one single plane of existence, of one realm, of one reality? No, really what we are saying, it, you know, it, in its plural form, in its plural form, what we are saying, and alameen, in its plural form, is the material and astro astronomical worlds, the spiritual world, the past, the present, the future. He is the master of all of those. He is the ruler, cherisher, and sustainer of all of that. The world of imagination, the world of thought. You cannot conjure a thought unless he creates that. You cannot conjure a thought. You may will it, you may wish it, you may want it, but it will only become a reality if he creates it. The dimension of the grave, he is the Lord and master of. You know, of heaven, of hell, of the rising, of the gathering, he is the Lord and master of that. If there is a multi-universe, if it turns out that the string theory was correct, string theory is correct, and that there is a multi-universe, then he is the Lord and the master and cherisher and sustainer of all of those universes as well. In fact, that adds to the complexity of everything. It doesn't reduce the complexity. It adds to the complexity. You know, so some have said that, no, because of the linguistic structure of the word, it refers to only um, sentient entities such as the angels and humanity and so forth, or those with, uh, with intelligence. But, you know, if you were to refer to um, the 26th surah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relays a query. Qala Fir'aun, wa ma rabbul alameen? That Fir'aun asks, who is the Lord of the alameen? Who? Qala, he said, Moses responds and says, that he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that may reside within. Once we fathom this, once we realize this, then there should be some stirring within the heart, as we have mentioned in the previous classes as well. There should be a stirring in the heart when one says, Alhamdulillah. You know, when you are better cognizant of this reality of just who your creator is. You know, when you realize that had it not been for Allah, you would have been like the brother you never had or the sister you never had. Tell me about them. Who can talk about that brother and that sister that they never had? No one. You know why? Because they weren't created. That's how we could have been. That he was in control of our creation from the very beginning. Otherwise, we would not be existent, not conscious. No one would know about us. No, it's like that brother you never had or that sister you never had, as mentioned earlier. This is our Lord and our creator, the one who determines when you come into the world, the one who determines how you come into the world, the one who de determines where you come into the world, when, where, how you enter into the world, and then when you will depart this world. We had no choice as to when we entered this world, so it makes sense to understand and realize that we have no chance as to when we leave this world, our life and our existence, our life and our existence, in fact, our very actions, for us to be able to make any action or to make any statement is dependent on him allowing it. And you live only for as long as he decrees that you live. And you are sustained only because he decrees that you are sustained or that we are sustained. This is our creator that the command at the end is his and his alone. That is who our creator is. Now, when we realize this, that we, we, what we, there, should be no, there should be no feeling within us, nothing, no feeling whatsoever. And we pray how many times a day? And we rehearse these words, how many times during that salah? And yet there is nothing in the heart. You know, Allah SWT, he says in Surah, surah Al-Anthar, he says the believer, at least at the outset, he says, 
the believer is he, or the believer is the one whom, when Allah's name is mentioned, when the name of Allah is mentioned, there is a tremor in the heart. There is a murmur in the heart. There is a stirring in the heart. That is the state of the believer. That is what allows the human being or prevents the human being from conducting evil so readily because they are aware of Allah and they are aware of the consequences as a result of that. See, prior to conducting a wrong or prior to con committing something that you know that will, uh, will displease Allah SWT, is there any feeling in the heart? Is there a stirring in the heart? Now compare that with you driving down the freeway or driving down the road and suddenly you hear behind you, ooh, whoop, and you see the lights of the police flashing. What happens? The first thing that happens is the heart starts racing. Then you start to take precautions. Am I doing something wrong? Meaning, am I doing something against the law? Equate that with sinning, for example. Like in from a religious perspective, is am I doing something that is a sin? What happens first? The heart, the heart starts to pace up. And then one is now trying to be conscious of, am I at the right speed limit? Should I slow down? Your foot's on top of the brake. You're now being cautious and you pull over and you're worried now while the police walks up to you. Right? I may be being a bit melodramatic, but at least to, a, to, a, to some degree, this is what is experienced by many people. Well, what of? What about when the name of Allah is mentioned? What, what, what happens when we call to mind our creator, our Lord, our cherisher, our sustainer, the one that has nurtured us to maturity, most gracious, most merciful, overflowing with love, and when we are about to commit a wrong? And so when we recite these words, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, is there a stirring in the heart? Recognizing and realizing who your creator is will drive you to obedience because you realize and you recognize that God only wants what's best for you. That is what God wants. He doesn't take anything from you. He doesn't benefit from you. What he decrees is what's best for you. And this will lead to a more devout level of obedience to Allah SWT. And obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an expression of one's gratitude towards Allah. The more solidified one's obedience, the greater their gratitude increases. And that is why you eventually enter a state, a state of being wherein when you rehearse the words, Alhamdulillah, there is a tremor in the heart. The heart comes to life because the one in whose hand your life and your death and your resurrection is in, has been mentioned. You know, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an narrated that the Prophet والسلام, said, when the slave says, Alhamdulillah, Allah says, my slave has truly praised me. Now look at the significance here. Sometimes we miss uh, the subtle details. You want to know if he cares about you. You want to know if he is listening. You want to know that he is there for you. You want to know that he is conscious of you. Never forget he is closer than our jugular veins, as Allah says in the Quran. He acknowledges the servant, which elevates the status of the servant immediately. But Allah acknowledges you. Your status is affected immediately as a result of that. The supreme being of the universe for which every single subatomic particle in the universe depends upon. He immediately, he intimately acknowledges his servant, saying, my servant. My, the fact that he's saying, my servant. There is no greater status that the human being can attain than being a true servant of Allah SWT. There is no greater form of liberation that we can acquire, liberation from all of the uh, temptations of the world, from all of the ornaments of the world, from the shackles of the dunya, than becoming a true devout servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. That is true liberation. And he says, my servant has truly praised me.
Allah, Ya Rasulullah.